welcome to today's lecture today's topic is cleaning and sanitation of abattoir and meat plant let me tell i have a similar lecture on cleaning of dairy plant so there will be some similarity so some of the basic aspect i have already discussed there particularly understanding about cleaning and some of the definitions that one should learn from there first in this lecture i will discuss once again about the importance and purpose of cleaning and then about the little bit chemistry and principle of cleaning about the chemicals for deter or for cleaning like detergents chemicals for sanitization different kind of detergents or sanitizers their properties and their method of applications i will also discuss about the basic steps for cleaning and the methods of cleaning like manual or gel cleaning or fogging and all those things and also about little bit cip cleaning and finally about the emergency disinfectants and do's and don'ts about sanitization here let us understand the importance or purpose of cleaning so firstly to meet national and international legislation so there are important legislation which ensures that proper quality standard is maintained in any meat or meat products to reduce the risk of litigation whenever there is deviation there can be litigation to satisfy the customer on hygiene and quality to allow maximum plant productivity to protect a hygienic visual image whenever there is any inspection by the team it will give a good image if we have a perfect maintenance and cleaning to help secure the shelf life of the products when the cleaning and sanitation is perfect about the appliances equipments and machineries naturally that will help in getting better shelf life of the product whether it is fresh meat or processed meat to avoid food poisoning or foreign body contamination to protect marketplace reputation of brand etc so altogether cleaning plays a very important role for sustainable running of a meat industry or meat plant or abattoir or processed meat product plant let us understand about principle of cleaning so this cleaning depends on the type of darts or soil accordingly the approach of using detergents or sanitizers will vary so what is this soil or dart it's important to know the types of soil on the surface to be cleaned fat and protein are the most common types of soil in abattoir or meat plant so since we are talking about abattoir or meat plant here the major concern of dart is either fats or protein so accordingly we need to decide about the use of different kind of detergents sometime there can be carbohydrates but in case of slaughterhouse it is rare normally carbohydrates are easily removed with water and detergents may increase the cleaning effects then second about fat it can be removed using water at a more than 55 degree celsius the efficiency can be improved by adding a detergent because fat will normally stick on the surface so if we use some detergent it will help in detaching the fat or by emulsification and helps in cleaning this is in continuation to cleaning principle the second category of soil or dart is protein which is most common in abattoir or meat plant next to the fat protein will coagulate and be difficult to remove when exposed to hot water for a long time the surfaces soiled with protein should be kept wet until the cleaning procedure can start so generally we use hot water for cleaning but when the protein is more the temperature should be low otherwise it will cause coagulation and it will be sticking on the surface and it becomes difficult to remove then the fourth is the mixed type of soil when soil type is a mixture of protein and fat the fat may be removed when using hot water but hot water may cause coagulation of protein so that's why the water temperature must therefore not exceed 60 degree celsius the good effect will be using detergent and water at 45 to 50 degree celsius if cold water is used the dosage of detergent must be larger now let us understand about chemistry of cleaning 
cleaning is essentially a physico-chemical process involving a wide range of reactions which depend on a number of variables which are as follows. As I have mentioned earlier, here is the matter of darts or soils which plays an important role and the detergent which is used for cleaning. So the chemistry of the darts and chemistry of the detergents that should match. So most common categories of darts or soil in slaughterhouse or meat plant I have already mentioned that is the fats and proteins. So these fats, oils and greases, these are often triglycerides of fatty acids and can vary from waxy solids to liquids. Depending on the nature of the fatty acids, it can be hard or semi-solid. They are insoluble in water and can vary in their structure and properties depending on their origin. In case of poultry, evisceres and fats are difficult to remove as compared to the beef tallow. In case of protein, in meat plants, the wash of proteins and other gut-based soils may give rise to a green or yellow deposit on the evisceresan equipment. In pig dehairing equipment, heavy hard protein deposits are common. So proteins are very common in abattoir or meat plant and the chemistry of protein I have already mentioned in a high temperature it gets coagulated and gets sticking on the surface. In continuation about chemistry of cleaning, the proteins I was talking about, the so blood protein is most common in abattoir or slaughterhouses. Blood proteins in abettors can create particular problems on porous surfaces, often giving rise to green, brown, very resistant staining. Aged protein can be quite hard, normally not scraping up easily with a fingernail. So blood get deposited here and there and that protein can create problem or staining and difficult to remove. So it should be taken care of. Similarly, carbohydrates and starches. So lime scale from water leaks, hot water tanks, cooking kettles, often we can see the deposits like scales. Then there can be corrosion deposits of steel, zinc, aluminium, brass, etc. Sometimes there can be adhesives from labels, etc. And sometimes inks and dyes from stamps. So these are some of the other soil material which should be taken care of. Now let us understand about types of detergents. In another lecture on cleaning dairy plant, I have explained about the terminologies and definitions related to cleaning and sanitization. Here we can have three different types of detergents like soapy detergent, soapless detergent and modern enzyme based cleaning agents. The soapy detergent, they are prepared mainly from animal fat, maybe from beef, mutton, tallow and marine oils and the vegetable oils like palm, soybean, groundnut, cotton seed, etc. And then second category is soapless detergents, usually in the form of powders or liquids are manufactured mainly from mineral oils by sulfonation. And the third category is enzyme based home cleaning agents. They are developed to solve the protein and fat cleaning problems in the meat industry. Cleaners mostly are mildly alkaline in nature. Some are acids based mainly on sulfamic acid or phosphoric acid or hydrochloric acid and are used in descaling activities. So we will see different uh, examples or different type of detergents in the next one. Here we will see properties of a good detergent like water softening ability complete water solubility, non-corrosive to surfaces, either metals or other surface, non-toxic and biodegradable, economical in use, good weighting or penetrating ability, emulsifying ability on fat, the fat will be sticking, so it need emulsifying property to remove, dissolving ability of food solids, deflocculating, dispersing or suspending ability, and good rinsing properties, scale and rust removing properties. So these are some of the desirable ideal properties a detergent should have. 
so we have seen that desirable properties of detergents though any single one may not have all the desirable properties here are some of the commonly used detergents in the meat industry like alkalis that is caustic soda caustic potash carbonate silicate potash acids like phosphoric nitric citric glycolic sulfamic and hydrochloric chelating agents like edta nta gluconate gluco heptonate and citrate solvents like isopropanol propylene glycol butyl diglycol ethers surfactants that is the surface active agents they can be anionic cationic non ionic or amphoteric this we will discuss again and then inhibitors either organic or inorganic origin and there can be enzymes like protease lipase and amylase these are modern detergent produced using this kind of enzymes and oxidizing agents like hypochlorite or isocyanurates so these are also used as oxidizing agents for cleaning in the detergent preparation now we will see the properties of a good sanitizer we have already discussed in earlier lecture in dairy plant cleaning that is sanitizers are the agents which are used for killing the microorganisms and making the food the surface the machinery safe for hygienic food production or meat or meat product preparation so the desirable properties are they should be quick in action non corrosive non toxic and gentle to the skin inexpensive must be easily rinsed away and leave no toxic residues easy to dispense and to handle must be safe in use and must not affect the operators who use it and must not affect the order or flavor of the food processed in the equipment after disinfection so these are some of the desirable properties for sanitizers here we will discuss little more about the sanitizing agents or their classification as i mentioned it should be effective and rapidly acting in killing microorganisms the chemical composition of disinfectants vary depending on the specific target that is in the slaughterhouse or in meat processing plant we need different kind of sanitizers than in any other place now this sanitizing agent commonly used in the food industry or in the meat industry belong to four main groups that is halogen based formulation quaternary ammonium compounds amphoteric compounds and inorganic acids and alkalis now the ability to sanitize mainly depend on concentration of the agent temperature of the solution and time of application these three factors the concentration the temperature and how much time that plays major role for the efficiency of the sanitizing agent now the first category of sanitizers are halogen based formulation chlorine is used in many food industries for sanitizing purposes that is the most commonly used in meat industry chlorine may be supplied commercially either as a gas or hypochlorite solution generally it will be calcium or sodium hypochlorite or sometime gaseous chlorine Actually hypochlorous acid is the effective substance used preferably for disinfection of water and the range of concentration for plant sanitation used is 130 to 220 ppm and maximum of 100 ppm for carcass washing in the modern slaughterhouse practices at the end carcass is washed with chlorinated water for decontamination and in such case the permitted level is 100 ppm the property of halogen based formulation the effective against a wide range of bacteria penetrate cell wall but has a corroding effect on the equipment so chlorine is very effective or halogens are very effective but they are very corrosive on the equipments or even the hands of the operator the second category of sanitizers that is quaternary ammonium compounds they are having additional cleaning property as surfactant effect on cell wall mainly bacteriostatic against gram positive organism they are non corrosive and odorless the third category that is amphoteric compounds 
means they can be either acidic or alkaline depending on the solution and they are having surface active disinfectant properties and the fourth category is inorganic acids and alkalis and some of them can be oxygen releasing substances for example peroxide compounds paracetic acid they have good effect on all microorganisms including spores and virus odorless and maybe corrosive so these are some of the aspect of the different type of sanitizing agents now let us discuss about sanitization technique so cleaning reduces microorganisms but it does not completely eliminate all surface contamination so whenever we clean a surface or a machine it will reduce much of the microbial load due to the use of detergent and removal of the soil or dirt but still some of the microorganisms or pathogens can be still there to eliminate them we need to use sanitizer so generally chemical sanitizers are preferred for most applications in the meat industries as they are easy to use now generally they are used by two types one is by spray type another by fogging so spray type they are the spray cleaning uses a lens on a pressure washer with chemical induction whereas in case of fogging aerial fogging uses compressed air to generate a fine mist of disinfectant solution which hangs in the air long enough to disinfect airborne organisms so we are going to discuss both the spraying and fogging type later on when we discuss actual cleaning and sanitization in meat plant here we will discuss the actual cleaning sequence which is step 1 to step 6 step 1 is physically pick up all big chunks of wastes on floor and equipment so after the one shift of operation there can be very big pieces of meat or skin or many other things which should be picked up manually the second step is dry sweep the floor to remove all particles of meat fat and scraps so we must sweep to remove the remaining bigger particles these two steps are essential to decrease the load on the wastewater treatment plant and to prevent clogging of the drain pipes then comes the third step that is the actual cleaning starts first is pre rinsing the floors and equipment with warm water 49 to 50 degree celsius to loosen the soil so water is sprayed or rinsed for removing the dirt and next is cleaning with detergent so whatever is not coming easily with the normal water that needs the help of detergent and the detergent should be in proper time temperature and concentration and also the presser helps in proper cleaning then the fifth step is rinse with hot water so this makes the cleaning complete and by chance anything left uh, that will be cleaned by the higher temperature and the last step is the sanitizing that is the finishing stage where any remaining microorganisms or pathogens should be totally destroyed so then only the cleaning become complete so this is the sequence for cleaning in meat plant or abattoir now we will discuss the different methods of cleaning and sanitation there it can be manual cleaning foam cleaning gel cleaning spray cleaning and aerial fogging so briefly we will discuss all these methods how it is done in the actual meat industry or in the meat plant so first we will discuss about manual cleaning manual means by hand we need to clean the agents may be applied manually using mop cloth squeegee brush green pad etc which normally we do in home this is usually reserved for small areas on machinery that is non waterproof or which needs dismantling it is labor intensive and usually requires safe neutral chemicals because we are going to apply with hand so it should be more safe for handling here we can see the photographs for different kind of appliances which are used for manual cleaning like squeegee the mops the green pads or the rubber gloves for using the hand application now we will discuss about foam cleaning 
As part of the cleaning process, an important ingredient is the application of chemical detergent to clean the surface and for the detergent to do its work. The longer it stays in contact with the surface, the more effective will be the removal of deposits and buildup. So foam is an idea of better contact and better removal of the dirt along with the use of detergent. To extend the period that the detergent stays in contact with the surface, air is introduced into the solution to cause it to form foam and attack the unwanted residue for longer time. So the detergent solution is prepared and then a foam is created and that allows it to stay in touch with the dirt for longer time and better easy removal. When the detergent has done its work, it is rinsed up with a pressure washer after which the area is normally finished with a sanitizing solution. So after the sufficient time when cleaning is almost suitable, then it is finished with rinsing and after which final wash and sanitizing is done. This is all about foam cleaning. Here we can see different kind of appliances for foam cleaning. In the left we can see foam generator, we can see the portable or mobile foaming setup and then we can see foaming process and the bottom right we can see the centralized foam generating system. So these are the modern applications for cleaning in meat industry by foam cleaning. Now we will discuss about gel cleaning and spray cleaning. Gel cleaning uses special chemicals and spray equipment to give a thick viscous layer of detergent that clings strongly even on vertical surfaces. So in vertical surface if something is strongly clinging it is very difficult to remove because the detergent solution passes through very quickly. This is normally confined to small areas where very long contact time of several hours is needed for burnt on or otherwise very stubborn deposits. So when something is very sticky and very difficult to remove, in such case gel cleaning is useful because it remains in touch for longer period. Next is about spray cleaning. I have mentioned earlier, spray cleaning uses a lens on a pressure washer or a backup sprayer. This method is often wasteful or chemicals which runs off rapidly is slower than foaming and produces more erosion. Now we will discuss about fogging and machine washing. Aerial fogging uses compressed air or other equipment to generate a fine mist of disinfectant solution which hangs in the air for long time. And this time is enough to disinfect airborne organisms and which settles on the walls and surfaces to give a bactericidal or bacteriostatic effect. In case of machine washing, industrial machine washing is typically done with an automatic or semi-automatic continuous tray wash machine with spray nozzles. Chemicals used in these machines must be low foam or even actively deforming and should be automatically controlled and closed by conductivity probe. Now we will discuss about cleaning in place. Means a machine or equipment will remain in its own place without dismantling and cleaning will be done. This is most commonly used in dairy plant and I have discussed it in more details in the cleaning in dairy plant. This is designed basically for the cleaning of internal surfaces and can be used for mixers, choppers and equipments that necessitate the use of tanks. The basic sequence of operation for this CIP is first is pre-rinse with cold water to remove grease and oil for 5 minutes. Then detergent wash with alkali for 15 minutes at 80 degrees Celsius for removal of residual soil. Then third is intermediate rinse for about 3 minutes with cold water to flush out detergent. The fourth step is circulation of sanitizer to kill any residual microorganisms maybe for 10 minutes. 
and then final cold water rains to flush out disinfectants the velocity of water through pipes maintained at about 1.5 meter per second to obtain a desired pressure so this is briefly about the cleaning in place in meat industry now we will discuss about emergency disinfection or sanitization it refers to the disinfection of all sites when by mistake an animal suffering from anthrax or fmd or such diseases enters the processing line or by chance it is slaughtered the following disinfectants are recommended for this purpose first is sodium hydroxide in a hot solution of approximately 2% for fmd and 5% for anthrax second option is sodium hypochlorite solution it could be 0.5% available chlorine it should have in the solution third hot water minimum 90 degree celsius or steam should be used and the fourth is chloride or of lime for layerages tables or transport vehicles and it should be about 5% solution of chloride of lime so these are some of the options for emergency disinfection here is do's and don'ts while using sanitizers the do's are measure the sanitizer correctly the optimum concentration should be used neither more nor less add the sanitizer to the correct amount of water to make the correct solution for use use a clean dry container for the sanitizer solution wash away all dirt before using the sanitizer and discard the solution when the day's work is finished it should not be stored for next day's use the don'ts are like don't use a sanitizer for sterilization don't store cleaning tools in a sanitizer solution don't use previous day's solution make fresh one each day and don't mix sanitizers and detergents it may activate both and the desired results is not possible here we can see different kind of machineries and equipments in the left side and in the right side we can see a diagram for cip system where the chemical solution is prepared and delivered to the washing point here we can see the different section of abattoir or meat plant in the photograph we can see different type of approaches and techniques applied either spraying or other pressure wash for cleaning in different parts of the abattoir or different operations now we are at the end of this lecture we have discussed about the cleaning and sanitation some of the important aspect like chemistry and principles of cleaning different kind of detergents different kind of sanitizers their desirable properties the proper approach and steps for cleaning and sanitization and different other aspect like emergency sanitization and the do's and don'ts with sanitization in addition to this one should under, uh, read and learn from the another lecture i already have for the cleaning in dairy plant basically this lecture is planned for undergraduate students but it will be equally useful for postgraduate students in future i am going to make another more details lecture for pg students thank you